So let's start with the basics. And the basics are basic, simple. Imagine that we have a very simple data distribution that only has one feature, feature X. We know that there exists some kind of true pattern in the world that we're trying to predict that maps this feature X to some kind of binary variable that we're trying to predict. So dealing with, for example, uh, with a binary classification setting. So we're trying to capture this true pattern by using machine learning algorithms. We have some kind of some data sample. And then if we look at this data that we actually have, we'll see that we're gonna have certain amount of positive class and negative class in it, like visualized here in the last plot in this slide. Uh, but all these parts are dynamic. And once we deploy our most production, both the true pattern and the sampling distribution, so our data distribution may change. Let's talk about it. So the first thing that might change is the actual sampling distribution, so the distribution of our covariates, which is just called covariate shift because covariates change, they shift their distribution. So imagine here, if we look at this part, we have original sample. Once we deployed our model to production, we see that the mean uh, of that distribution has increased and it uh, looks different now. That means that if we sample from the distribution, the new distribution, also the actual class balance might change, uh, which means that model performance may or may not be affected. And again, we discussed that in depth in our performance estimation documentations, blogs, webinars. If you're interested in how covariate shift impacts performance, uh, then you're welcome to check those out. Uh, just to define covariate shift a bit more formally, Covariate shift is the change in the joint model input distribution. So we look at the joint uh, distribution of all the model inputs. If the joint distribution changes, not even if any specific feature changes, but if this joint distribution changes, so maybe just correlations change, we are dealing with covariate shift. Now, the second uh, potential reason why your models may fail is so-called concept drift. And for concept drift, the sampling, we're going to assume that it stays the same, so there is no change in the covariate distribution, but the true pattern that exists in the world has changed. So before we had this strong kind of sigmoid pattern, now it became more linear. And if we train our model to capture the sigmoid pattern, but in time, the pattern will change, then the model will actually mispredict uh, quite a lot of observations, and it's going to be quite incorrect, especially here, where a lot of observations have shifted from positive class uh, to uh, sorry, from negative class to positive, where it should predict, let's say 0 0.8, it would only predict, let's say 0 0.5. So we're gonna see strongly decreased performance, especially if the, your model inputs are around uh, this center here, which we can assume that they are. So we're gonna see a significant drop in performance if there is concept drift of almost any kind. So this is something that we really need to be aware of. And if we can measure it, capture it, quantify it, and then resolve it, we should do it as much as possible. So again, just to uh, formally define what concept drift is, it's a change in the relationship between the target and the model inputs. So it's a conditional probability of the target given model input distribution. Uh, and now I just have a kind of dense uh, kind of summary page that delineates the differences between the concept drift and the coverage shift. So that should be drift here. Let me fix it right now. Uh, and again, I already defined those, so I'm going to skip it. And I gave the formula. When it comes to impact on performance, that's one thing that bears repeating. Uh, concept drift will almost always have a negative impact on your performance. Covariate shift uh, may or may not actually have a negative impact on your performance. It might have no impact whatsoever, or it might, in edge cases, actually a positive impact on the, your model performance. Imagine that your uh, data drifts away from the class boundary. So you have some kind of reasonably well-defined class boundary and the data has moves away from that region. That means that the data has become more linearly separable and it's actually easier to make predictions on that data. So uh, we're gonna expect an increase in performance, whatever metric you use to measure your performance. Uh, when it comes to when we expect to see either concept drift or covariate shift, for concept drift, we expect it to see in use cases where the data is not strongly informative. So in other words, if you measure, if you use a, some kind of metric, like for example, ROC AUC, we expect that if ROC AUC is generally speaking low or 
in absolute terms low, like around 0 0.5, 0 0.6, maybe 0 0.7, we expect to see quite a lot of constant drift. Whereas we expect to see covariate shift for use cases where you have very strongly informative data and you can predict the target with high degree of certainty. The reason for that being is basically if the data is very informative, then almost any change that has to do with features that are informative of the target is already one of the features that we have access to because we have access to almost all the features that have uh, information, relevant information about the target. Whereas if there is some feature that we don't observe, we don't have in our data set and this feature drifts, we're going to observe it as concept drift. So if there is not a lot of information in the data, concept drift will happen more often. Uh, when it comes to detecting concept drift and covariate shift, uh, we do require targets for detecting concept drift uh, because if you just look at the formula, you do have the target here. So we need to use uh, the target to really validate whether this pattern has changed in time. For covariate shift, we are only dealing with the distribution of the axis, the features, so we don't need to have access to targets. Now, how can we actually quantify its impact on performance? So we have a couple of algorithms here. For concept drift, we have our reverse concept drift algorithm, which is kind of the main topic of today's presentation. Uh, for covariate shift, uh, we came up with a couple of algorithms. We invented CBP and MCBP, and we also implemented uh, importance weighting, which was discovered by, I uh, forgot the name of the university, but the researchers in 2019, and we're gonna be implementing that very soon in our open source library as well. Um, and when it comes to measuring the magnitude, interestingly, we're using the same algorithm as for detecting concept drift RCD, which is available in our uh, cloud product. Uh, whereas for concept uh, covariate shift, we're going to be using either the univariate drift detection methods, such as uh, Jensen Shannon distance or any of the statistical measures, such as KS, uh, Kolmogorov Smirnov test or chi square tests. Uh, uh, or when it comes to distance measure, we also have like, I think five other ways to do it. Uh, Westerstein distance is there, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And we also have two multivariate drift detection methods. We have the drift reconstruction error uh, and domain classifier, which is a new method that we just released, uh, I think like three days ago. So do check it out. There is just a new release uh, with uh, quite robust multivariate drift detection method called the domain classifier.